Hi, welcome back to Brooks's Bass Corner. Today I'm going to be reviewing this Ernie Ball Music Man Stingray Four String Bass. But before I do, if you're enjoying the reviews and videos on the channel, please hit the subscribe button below, hit the notification bell so that you're notified when I release new videos, and please leave a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. If you have any questions regarding the bass or the review, leave them below and I'll come back to you as soon as I can. Enjoy the review. Before I get on with the review, I'd like to point out two things regarding the video demos you've just watched. Firstly, the John East BTB MMSR replacement circuit was installed in 2013 and I can't recall if the bass and treble controls were offered with centre detents or not. Either way, the circuit offers 14 dB of boost and 7 dB of cut at 40 Hz on the base end and 20 dB of boost and 16 dB of cut at 10 kHz on the treble side. However, for simplicity in the video demos, I have classed the maximum amount of cut as 0% and the maximum amount of boost as 100%. The MIDI EQ is simpler with a centre detent and 12 dB of boost and cut and a frequency sweep from 100Hz to 1kHz or 200Hz to 2kHz depending on the jumper settings on the circuit board. This bass has it set to the lower setting. Back to the review. The Stingray 4 string is a classic bass design that has lasted 45 years this year and remains as popular as it has ever been. 
Minor tweaks and changes to the design and electronics over the years have led to variations and certain periods of production becoming more desirable than others, but regardless, the Stingray is a base classic of some standing. If a bassist were to own a Precision, a Jazz and a Stingray, they would certainly cover a lot of the tonal ground required of most bassists. Leo Fender certainly knew how to create classic instruments, that's for sure. This particular example is a 1999 model with the oiled neck finish and the upgrades were made to improve on an already fine instrument but there was something lacking in the attack and delivery compared to another Stingray I had previously owned. The pickup improved a number of shortcomings that were holding the bass back a little whilst the East circuitry gave me more tonal flexibility as well as sounding a little more like the original era Stingrays. You will notice in the demo that I refer to a Sabre treble boost activated via a push-pull control. This has been voiced by John East to resemble the treble performance of the Music Man Sabre basses, which had a glassier performance than the treble of the Stingray bass. So if the treble EQ requires a little more articulation and detail, this Sabre setting is ideal, particularly if you're looking for that glassy top end. Also, John voiced this circuit to more closely resemble the bass and treble tones of the early era Stingray basses, and I have to say, I do prefer it compared to the stock 1999 circuitry. The build quality, playability, comfort and balance are everything you would expect from a Music Man bass, and the teal gloss finish was always a favourite of mine. As the Stingray has proved over the years, it is more than adept at covering all musical styles and playing styles, which is why so many players have taken it to their hearts over the decades. Fashions and fads may change and come and go, but the Stingray remains as relevant now as it did when it was launched in 1976. The bass has undergone so many changes, especially in the last 15 to 20 years, and the more recent upgrades which led to the Stingray special overhaul have certainly benefited the bass and taken it into the current decade flying high. The Stingray is immensely flexible, playable and adaptable, that it doesn't just apply to one musical genre, so no matter what you play, you can guarantee that the Stingray will slot right in. More recent examples with an extra single coil pickup or an extra humbucker certainly broaden the tonal palette, but while I've never heard a Stingray approximate a precision or a jazz, it doesn't really need to. Just buy those basses for those sounds. But similarly, consider a Stingray based on its uniquely identifiable sounds and tones. If you enjoyed this review, please hit the subscribe button below. Hit the notification bell so that you receive notifications when I post up new videos and please give the video a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about the base or the review, leave them below and I'll come back to you as soon as I can. Look forward to seeing you here again on Brooks's Bass Corner.